the easiest scenario is to make a website for yourself. Why? Right, because you know exactly what you want. One of the hardest things in being a web designer is that you can't read minds. The minute you can figure that out, if you can read minds, it's going to make this a lot easier. You're going to make boatloads of money selling the book, telling other people how to do it. But reality is, we have to communicate with our clients to understand what they want. And the hardest part is, even if they know exactly what they want, they often don't know how to tell you how to do it. Does that make sense? And more frequently, they just know that they need more business, so they simply say, I need a website. And for the longest time, that was a standard brochure type website where it was just basically a brochure put online. No interactivity, you could flip the, through the pages, it was like redoing a brochure. I'm sure you've all seen sites like that. Sites are getting more complex, and now we are selling things online with e-commerce. We have blogs, we have discussions, we have videos, we have forums. There's all sorts of interactivity, which makes it more difficult to design a site. So I'm going to go through the steps in creating a site today. Um, you're going to have to learn, plan, design, code, launch, and maintain. Which of these sections do you think takes the most amount of, of time? I'm sorry, I heard somebody. Good guess. Somebody else? Learning what they want. Good guess. Somebody else? Coding. Excellent guess. Somebody else? Maintain. There you go. Process of elimination. Now, I want you to think about this. How long has Amazon existed? Ten years. Ish. More than one year. We'll all agree, more than five years, right? It's been in existence without the site ever going down. Hi, Ryan. Come in, have a seat. Um, so what phase do you think Amazon's been in for the last 10 years? Maintain. Maintain. You will be, once you create it, and this is the thing that gets people about web design, especially graphic designers. There are two difficult concepts for a graphic designer to really make peace with when they move over to web design. Concept number one, we don't all have the same piece of paper. Think about that. How many of you have taken any of our graphic design classes? Okay, most of you. Once you print it, is everybody viewing the same piece of paper? Yeah, pretty much. They might fold it, they could cut it, but it's pretty much you start with the same piece of paper. With the web, we don't all have the same piece of paper. How many of you have been to my website now? It's okay to ignore my site, that's fine. I, it doesn't hurt me at all. Um, but you can view my site through a phone, through a tablet, through a computer, and it changes. How many of you lo have looked at my site through a, uh, through a phone? Does it look okay? Yeah, it's all right. it, doesn't, it doesn't look the same, right. but it's usable. Right. So my site actually changes its order based on the device that's viewing it. How would you get a piece of paper to do that? You can't. So that's a hard concept to, to understand, to design for, and to implement. And it's the philosophy behind responsive design. Because they don't all, not everybody who views it has to view it the same way. Because if you take my site and just shrink it, it doesn't work. It actually reorders it so it comes in a straight column so that you can still read the text. And you guys will learn how to do that. Interesting stuff. <coughs> so maintenance is the longest part because you're going to have to adjust to things over time. Um, the other thing that graphic designers have an issue with, different pieces of paper, um, and with maintenance being the thing that takes the longest time, if you are a graphic designer and you design a newsletter, how much maintenance is there once it's mailed out? None. None. So that's the other thing, is that graphic design projects finish. Web design projects don't. And the pro problem comes into the customer's mindset. They hired you to build that website. So in three years, if they want to change what's on the menu, you better be available to do it. They actually think that way, several people. 
Now you really should plan for that because a lot of your bread and butter, if you're being paid as a web designer, is site maintenance. So you want to make sure that you, when you price things, you price for, the, for each step. Because what if they take your plans, they like them, and they go somewhere else? Do you think that ever happens? It's okay as long as you get paid for the plan. Cut your losses, move on. Make sure they pay you for each piece. So maintenance is the hardest, longest part. And it's the hardest part because technology changes. Now we all agree that Amazon's been about, around about 10 years. How long has it been an effective choice to go shopping on Amazon from your cell phone? Probably three or four, not all the whole way back, right? So you have to keep adding features. It's never done. You're going to upgrade. You're going to change things. You're going to add new features all the time. And that's why maintenance is the longest. So I'm sort of starting at the end, but be aware, this is the longest part of your life cycle. So you have a new client. And the new client, really great person, has a wonderful little small business, and they want to make it grow larger. And so they come and they hire you and say, I need a website. What do you do? How? That would be the exact route to go about it. Now, here's a homework assignment for you. You'll get time during class to do this. There are actually templates for discovering, for interview questions, for what a web designer should ask their client before they actually give them a proposal. Because how are you going to quote it if you don't know what they want, right? So you guys are going to take a little time during lab time today, and you're going to go out and find some of those templates, and we're going to put them into a discussion so we can look at the different ones people come up with. Because it's a good idea. You wouldn't want to reinvent the wheel. You guys with me on that concept? If there's already a good, well-tested template out there of questions to ask a prospective customer, wouldn't it make sense to start with something somebody else has already debugged? So we're going to take a look at some of them. There's a lot of them out there. So typically, you're going to start by asking them questions. And things that you're going to ask them. Give me an example. I'm your client. I want a website. Well, what do you know about me so far? That you want a website. There you go. What else do you know about me? I'm looking for somebody else to make it for me. That's about it. So what do you need to know before you can even give me a quote? What do you do? You What's my business? What else do you need to know? What do you want the website to do? In multiple ways. And the way that you phrase that, I'm going to break that down. Who's my target audience? What is my goal? What do you want to do? That's typically considered like a transformation, where somebody goes from being a browser to a customer. So for maryhelp.net, I want people to find videos and use them. I'm not making any money off this. I'm providing information. I want it to make it easy for them to find the information. But let's say I'm selling widgets. The goal would be to have people go from looking at widgets to buying widgets. Okay, So you need to know what they want the site to be capable of doing. And I think that's where you were going with that. What else would you need to know? What's your uh, price point? Price point, absolutely. What's my budget? Should I be working with somebody sitting at a long table in India who's cranking out websites at $500 a week? Or do I want to have a really big team here with graphic designers? and coders, and people to do video? Or am I playing the kid down the block to do my very first website ever because he needs a portfolio piece? Because those are all different price points, right? So it's good to know their price point. What else should you know? You already have some sort of branding, like a logo. Or you want to get all of their brochures, all of their current design information, because you want to typically stick with the brand if they have it. That's a really good point. What else do you want to know? Do you have enough information to go make them a website or even offer them a quote? What else do you need to know before you can give them a quote? What content do they want? What content, which would also break down into how many pages. What else do you need to know? Who's going to provide the content? Do you have to write it? Sometimes they expect you to write it. What color?
colors do they want? Who's their competition? You know what my favorite thing to do when working with a new client is? I ask them to look at their competition and tell me what their three favorite websites among the competition are. 